Hi, Ben Carpenter here. I'm going to talk to you about a recent piece of research by Brad Schoenfeld at AL, which looked at strength training versus hypertrophy training and their resulting effect on muscular hypertrophy and strength levels. So, what this looked at was powerlifting style workouts versus bodybuilding style workouts. Quick little bit of background. Bodybuilding style workouts tend to be body parts split, i.e. chest one day, legs per one day, back one day, shoulders one day, etc, etc. Whereas powerlifting style routines are um, more focused on the exercises, i.e. squat, deadlift, bench press, etc. They will train with lower reps per set at a higher percentage of their one rep max. So they'll train with, let's say, five reps or less, typically, at a higher percentage of their one repetition maximum. Whereas bodybuilders would train typically eight to 12 reps, impartial recovery, short rest periods, and higher volume per workout. So the whole point of this study was, if volume load was equal amongst both, which would have the greatest results on muscle growth and strength training? Volume load is defined as reps times sets times weight. So bodybuilding style workouts, because they've got much higher volume, tend to have a higher volume load than powerlifting workouts because it's very easy for them to do lots and lots of reps per exercise. Whereas powerlifters resting long times between sets, their volume is usually much lower. So here's the setup of the study. They were well-trained individuals who trained elite for at least a year, at least three times per week. The hypertrophy group would do chest on one day, back on one day, legs on one day. Three exercises per body part, three times 10 on each, and 90 seconds rest. Now, the powerlifting style group would do the same exercises, the same body parts, because of course you need to keep things equal, but they would do one exercise of each on three different days. So whereas the hypertrophy group would do three chest exercises, three leg exercises and three back exercises. The strength training group would do one of each body part on each day. Does that make sense? So they're doing chest, legs and back on Monday, chest, legs and back, but different exercises Wednesday, chest, legs and back, but different exercises again on Friday. Okay, so here's the interesting thing. When volume load was equated, there were no differences, no significant differences in muscular hypertrophy between the two groups. However, there was a greater tendency for strength increases in the strength training group, which is no real surprise. So the interesting thing is powerlifting style training can result in similar muscular hypertrophy if volume load is equated. That's the big if. However, when I first read this piece of research, I thought it was going to perhaps be problematic because people are going to look at the abstract and see that powerlifting routines can result in similar muscular hypertrophy to bodybuilding style routines, which sounds awesome because if you're getting stronger on a strength training program and you're getting similar muscle gains, why would you even bother with the bodybuilding training? You'll tra you can get the same muscle gains, but you'd be weaker. So on paper, strength training groups would win. Now, Brad is very, very good at identifying the limitations of his own research. So, as he puts it, the devil is in the detail. For people that have read the full text of this study, here are the interesting things to note. The hypertrophy training, their workouts only lasted 17 minutes. Now, some people think that this is perhaps a flaw in the methodology, but you must bear in mind that if you were going to do a 60-minute chest workout, how long would the, high, the strength training group have to train for to achieve the same volume load? So there have to be trade-offs. So the hypertrophy group, their workouts lasted 17 minutes. The strength training group workout lasted 70 minutes. So you're looking over three times the length of the workout. Um, other things that, you, that need to be identified. Um, the strength training group, there was a higher much higher frequency of complaints in terms of injuries and in terms of general lethargy and fatigue. So although strength training can result 
in the same bout of muscular hypertrophy. It takes a lot longer in terms of time efficiency per workout, and it's also more taxing on someone's body for them to train at that higher volume, at that intensity, for that period of time. So, here are your conclusions, limitations, take-home messages, and things that you shouldn't take home from the study. Um, you can achieve muscular hypertrophy with powerlifting routines, i.e. seven times three workouts, as long as there's sufficient training volume over the course of the week. It isn't necessarily more efficient than bodybuilding style workouts, because bodybuilding style workouts could get there with a fraction of the time. Um, bicep growth, which was used as the measurement, um, because there was an issue with accuracy in measuring leg uh, mass, um, bicep growth was used as the hypertrophy measurement despite there being no direct bicep training. So you can grow your biceps without doing bicep curls. So we can kind of put an end to arguments that say you can't or can or whatever. This is, you know, definitive uh, research on the topic. Um, strength training will be harder on the body for you to try and do it in terms of bodybuilding purposes. That volume load for that length of time did take its toll on the individuals. Um, limitations. Some people complained about the frequency, i.e. because the powerlifters were training three times per week on the same body part, whereas hypertrophy groups were training once every seven days on the body part, that is perhaps a factor. Now, yes, that's a limitation, but if you were going to try and evaluate training frequency, the whole setup of the study would have had to have been different. Because if, let's say for example, um, bodybuilders were doing a chest workout on Monday, which is quite typical for bodybuilders, how could you structure the routine to get the same volume load per body part if you did that for, her, for strength training. They would have to train with an enormous volume, um, which just isn't practical. By doing one movement per body part per day with a strength training group, to me, it is the best way of evaluating it without having a massive trade-off. Um, and honestly, you know what, just to conclude this, if there was a better way of do if there's a better way of doing it, I'm a firm believer that Brad would have probably found the way to do it. He is a very, very intelligent guy. So for for most people to look at the study and see the shortfalls, chances are if you tried to patch up those shortfalls, you'd have created an even bigger shortfall elsewhere. So as a general rule, Brad would have thought of it when he was creating the study. And let's just leave it at that. So conclusions. Powerlifting style workouts, i.e. seven times three, can result in muscular hypertrophy, equal to bodybuilding routines if volume load is equated. That's the big if. Bicep growth can occur even without bicep training. Bodybuilding style workouts are still more efficient to achieve the same result in terms of hypertrophy. Strength training is still the better method for increasing strength. Um, bodybuilding could perhaps be be superior because their workouts only lasted 17 minutes they had additional time for more volume other exercises such as additional bicep calf whatever work so although in this study muscle building was uh, equated it is feasible that bodybuilders could have achieved even greater muscular hypertrophy if they had thrown in additional exercises on top of the routine um, frequency will have an impact on muscular hypertrophy, but honestly, I think the way the study was laid out is the best way for it. I can't think of a better way to have done it that wouldn't have had bigger shortfalls. So, you know what? Trust Brad's work and leave it at that. So, I hope you found this useful. I'd love to hear your feedback, questions, comments, etc. Um, so, you can post them on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter Personal Training, or my Twitter page, which is BDC Carpenter. And thank you for watching.